this is a video about infrared photography and what it is and how to do it. It'll be short and to the point, so I'm not going to give you a full breakdown of what it is, only give you the Reader's Digest version. I will share links in the description if you would like to learn more. So in brief, there's three ways to do infrared photography with film, a filter or a converted camera. For my photography, I personally use a full spectrum converted Nikon D7500. This conversion is where the IR cut filter has been removed and replaced with an IR pass filter, making it sensitive to UV, visible and infrared light. When I bring these images into Lightroom or Photoshop, they are, you guessed it, not your normal looking images, but with thorough editing, you can get some great results. The best cameras for infrared photography are those with a live view as it's the best way to focus and take your images. Now that's all I'm going to talk about what infrared photography is. There's heaps of other videos and articles out there that can fill in the blanks, which I've luckily linked below. So let's get to the fun part, the shooting. Now these are suggestions on how I shoot and how to get the images that I want and like. These are, after all, just tips and recommendations. Okay, with infrared photography, there's four things you need to think of when it's time to shoot. Number one is your white balance. You need to set a custom white balance. This will make it a lot easier to edit the photos and to get the results that you're after. I mean, you don't have to set a white balance. You can use auto if you really want to, but I recommend setting a custom white balance for better results. And the best way to do this is to focus on something green, such as grass or leaves, and that's it. This is an image with auto white balance, and this is an image with a custom white balance. Number two, when to shoot. Now, one of the trickiest things with infrared photography is thinking that it's like normal photography. You don't want to be shooting at sunrise or sunset. You don't want fading light. Infrared photography looks best in harsh lighting. So the middle of the day, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. You want as much light to be absorbed by foliage as possible. So summertime at, at midday is the prime time. The sun needs to be directly above or in front of your subject. A backlit infrared photograph is a sad infrared photograph. One of the, I suppose, secrets with infrared photography that no one really talks about is that you can sleep in. You don't have to get up early to take a great image, which is perfect if you're a lazy landscape photographer. Number three, what to shoot. Infrared photography requires visualizing what your image will look like after it's been edited. It can be hard, especially if you're coming at it from a pure landscape photography perspective. So what you need to do is focus on the separation of tones within the image. Now, what I mean by this is, well, take a look at this image. See the three contrasting tones here? We have the sky, the hills and trees, and the ground. It's this contrast of color and tones that makes a great infrared image. Now look at this image. This was taken in a rainforest with a lot of foliage and tree cover. Now, it's not bad, but there is too much of one color and no separation, and colors all blend into one. Now, by changing perspective and looking up, I've increased the separation and it just works a lot better. Less is more in infrared photography. Number four, your camera settings. This is a personal preference, but a sharper image makes a better infrared image. I shoot the majority of my images at around f5.6 to f11, as I want to see the details. I also aim to overexpose my images by maybe a stop or two, but making sure not to crush the highlights. The more light, the better. But once again, this is a personal preference, so you do you. So recapping, use a custom white balance, shoot in the harshest light, find separation of tones in your images, and use a small f-stop and slightly overexpose. So we've taken the photos, so now it's time to edit. Let's go. With whatever you're editing, be it photos or video, there's a million ways to do it. With my infrared photography, I love the pink Candyland look. That's just me, that's what I like. So all of my editing is focused on achieving this. Now you can use this as a guide or inspiration, but I'll leave it up to you. So I will be using Lightroom and Photoshop for my editing. And the first thing I need to do is import my image, which I've done right now. Now I have to create a camera profile in Lightroom for it to work well with the infrared custom white balance. I do this by firstly creating a DNG version of this image, which means I go to File, Export, Save as DNG. Now close Lightroom. Now 
Now I have to download the Adobe DNG Profile Editor by searching for Adobe DNG Profile Editor 1.0.4 or clicking the link I have provided in the description. Scroll down to DNG Profile Editor September 2012. I'm using a Windows computer so I will choose that one. And then I just download. So once I have downloaded the profile editor, I just open my DNG file that I just saved. And on the right here, I go to color matrices. So where white balance calibration is on the right, I need to lower the temperature to minus 100. And as you notice, the colors have changed. So now I need to go over to options again, give it a profile name, something, you know, really original. Now I have to export it. So as you can see here, I'm using a Nikon D7500 and it's already picked up the profile. Now I need to put it in the specific folder so Lightroom can read it, which is as I'm using a Windows computer. Under C drive, program files, Adobe, Lightroom Classic, resources, camera profiles, camera, scroll down to your camera model, so I'm using a D7500, go in there and save. So close this down. Now I reopen Lightroom and my profile should be in the camera profile list as it is right there. As you can see when I mouse over it, so this is using the camera's custom white balance. Now this is using the Lightroom color profile. So what I want to do, double click on that, make sure that's set. So this is good. So what I want to do now is swap the color channels. I want to swap red to blue and blue to red. And I do this by editing in Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, I choose image, adjustments, channel mixer. In the red channel, I will set the red amount to zero and I will set the blue amount to 100. Then I change to the blue channel. So red is 100 and blue is zero. Okay. And all I've got to do now is save. Jumping back in Lightroom now, and this is where the fun begins. Here are my two images, one with a swapped color channel and one without. In the updated one, I will now choose my white balance. As my white balance in camera was already set from green, I will choose a part of the greenery in the image now. Now I change the temperature and tint to really bring out that pink and blue look. Adjust your settings and whatnot, and there you go. Not too bad, I'm happy with it. Now it's time to export. So there you go, a brief and to the point rundown of what infrared photography is and how to do it. Hopefully this helped you in some special way. Depending on how this video goes, I might do an infrared photography time-lapse tutorial. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Don't forget to subscribe.